dividend. Dividend is a very important adjustment that we will be coming across. There are two types of dividends that you have. What are the two types of dividends that you have? One, you call it out as pre-acquisition dividend. The other one is post-acquisition dividend. One is pre-acquisition dividend, the other one is post-acquisition dividend. What do you mean by pre-acquisition dividend? What do you mean by post-acquisition dividend? Repeat. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. How pre uh, the one is declared before uh, acquisition, parent would have received it. Mm -hmm. That means such a dividend received by the parent company after acquisition, in them only you have two classifications, pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. Uh, how about uh, Kripakaran? What do you mean by pre-acquisition dividend? Girish? Uh, Rafia was about to tell only that I told uh, parent company would be receiving a dividend after acquisition. The receipt of dividend by the parent from subsidy company in them you have classification as pre and post. Therefore, what you have not received, you don't have to think. Okay. So, it was something like this way. Simply one week. I was just uh, had my uh, yearly lunch and I was just uh, before class I was just uh, into the office, came back. Chandimal and uh, Thirumani were uh, playing. Uh, while playing, I had a feeling, should I take a short nap and all that. So, cricket was also attracting. Which one is more important for me? Nap is very important. So, I just uh, kept, my wife came and switched off. When I got up, uh, the TV was not working. I was just asking, hey, sleeping. Which one is, uh, only one thing you can do at a time, no? So, she switched off. So, you can't be receiving a dividend before acquisition. Not possible. So, that means, the dividend that we are talking about in the hands of the parent company should have occurred only after acquisition. In them, you have a two classification. So, the first one is ruled out. I told you, told you this example. Thirumane or Sandhimal batting is not going to help me. That is only when you are getting into sleep mode only we have just taken. Auditing, corporate law, ISCA are uh, beautiful materials for you to get quick sleep. Correct or incorrect? For me, it happened like that. Maybe the subject titles were different. That point of time, we called that as SADP, System Analysis and Data Processing. I was not knowing uh, where the CPU will be. I was in a computer at all. But I scored maximum only in the paper, 75 marks in the entire CA, I scored maximum. I have not seen CPU at all. So in CA Institute, they will have one big computer, half the size of this uh, room. And uh, it will be a closed en uh, enclosure and all of us will be just taken and they will this is the computer. Uh -huh. That is where we will be seen. So where CPU is lying, so it will be like, uh, now if you go to... Kalpakam for uh, nuclear power plant and all that, they will see, this is power generation. Once I had an executive program. So, we were taken for a factory visit. 45 minutes, they are telling, this is the place. So, you have to put gloves, helmet and uh, you have to go like that. Who is an executive, who is a visitor, you will not know. <laughs> so, likewise, we are just seeing everything in uh, that uh, uh, green color uh, thing was just uh, shown. So, please just uh, understand a very important thing. It is not like that. Your corporate law or uh, uh, auditing or uh, SADP. If you study with purpose, it will, you will never get sleep. But generally, you will have that sort of feeling. Come on, Del, what is pre-acquisition? No. Uh, say I will put the simple case. You just buy more than 50 percentage in single shot. 
it is not the question of 20 30 percent initially you bought later on you are increasing it is dividend not profit huh? I will come back oh, yes Mm. Mm. So, they have bought by June and uh, dividend got declared by September. So, dividend related to which period is pre-acquisition? So, I will put the case easier for you to understand, closely follow. I just wanted to find from you what is the level. <coughs> now, I have to go a little deep. If uh, majority of you got the correct answer, I would have started from here. What is the treatment? Now, I have to go deeper. Look into the case this way. Um, there are uh, combinations I will work out. I am just doing it for pre-acquisition. Combination 1, 2, 3 and 4 combination. So, dividend related and uh, the source. Dividend may relate to year number 1. Profit is related to year number 1. Correct? You have got to say possible or not. I am not directly attacking pre-acquisition dividend. I am taking you through a particular Discussion from there, I will tell this is the one I am just referring to as pre acquisition. So, therefore, keep your mind open. Okay. So, combination number one year number one's dividend can be paid out of year number one's profit, possible or not. Let me repeat year number one's dividend can that be declared out of, declared out of year number one's profit. So, yes or no, that is the way I want to give. So, our answers yes, no like this, not like this. So Indians will normally do this way, both for yes as well as for no. So yes, no. This is our classroom, uh, what should I say, ticket. So we should not say same answer, same is bad word. This way you should not do yes and no. Come on. Possibilities there are not. What size are Yes. Yes. Year number 2's dividend paid out of year number 2's profit. Possibilities there or not? All of you? Yes. Year number 1's dividend can that be paid out of year number 2's profit? Yes or no? Year number 1's dividend can that be paid out of year number 2's profit? I am talking about only equity. I am not talking about preference. In the case of preference, then people will be just telling, sir, cumulative preference shares, year number one's dividend can be paid out of year number. I am not talking about preference at all. So, I am ruling out that possibility. No, it is not possible. Correct? No, year number one's dividend cannot be paid out of year number two's profit. Year number two's dividend, can that be paid out of year number one's profit? All of you say, sir, no? Yes. Now, this I will change to this way. I will I will just uh, shift that entire thing in a different way. The same combination, pre-acquisition period, post-acquisition period. What is pre-acquisition period? What is post-acquisition period? After acquisition, whatever period we normally consider as post. Any period fallen prior to our control will be pre. Now I will ask a question. Is this combination possible? Pre-acquisition periods dividend can that be declared, declared out of? I will put like this. This being dividend. This being source. I am asking the same question. Pre-acquisition period dividend can that be declared out of pre-acquisition profit? Possible or not? All of you? Yes. Now, what is the next question? Next matching combination. Post and post. 
possibility is there or not yes then pre and post possibility is there or not all of you no i may change my decision later okay right now it is no the next post and pre yes yes now paying pre acquisition period dividend out of pre acquisition profit what is the name through which you call this dividend come on all of you how you call this item i will be doing some changes here and there so you just don't worry about that hmm come on how do you call this pre acquisition dividend correct that is pre acquisition dividend uh next combination post acquisition dividend paid out of post acquisition profit how do you call post acquisition dividend correct now third one i am not going to take up at all why third one i will not take up it is not possible so therefore we are not taking it up at all okay now last combination what is the last combination post acquisition period dividend paid out of pre acquisition profit what is the name through which we will call now there is a problem no you started thinking now what is the name through which we call is it the period for which the dividend declared is important or the source from which the dividend got declared which one is to be given importance period for which you are telling i will tell a story behind this and ask you to conclude from there you have to match <clears throat> the person is celebrating his daughter's marriage the final the climax point in the marriage is the place at which the in cinema and all that uh, they will be slowly telling the mantra and all that then the police will come and say stop the marriage correct no have you seen that how many movies you have seen so many movies in all languages correct no so why they have chosen at that particular point of time one day before also they would have come or in the morning also they would have come why at that point of time because they want to have a thrill correct no so that point of time the police is telling so why we are telling to stop the marriage is that the jewelry what the girl is just wearing is not an appropriate one it is a stolen property correct now the girl's dad is telling no no i bought from my neighbor i have paid money only so the neighbor engaged in some theft cases he told that he had sold this to these many people are you understanding so now you can understand a person who is holding a theft property stolen property what the police will think whether they will think that this person had stolen or he bought it from a person who had stolen for them what is the view point you tell me you are a policeman or police woman what is that you will uh, conclude come on ha uh, so what is very important you have to prove the source this is what income tax officer is also asking correct no now tell from that example which i have provided tell what is a fourth combination title have you understood why i have just uh, given this example so no better example in the textbook you can find even if i write a book i can't give this example only in a classroom i can just give come on ha huh? very so what is very important is not the period it is only the source correct no so therefore what is the conclusion that you have to make pre acquisition dividend means what so pre acquisition dividend is a dividend declared out of pre acquisition profit that's all matter is very simple it may relate to post acquisition period it may relate to pre acquisition period we are not really worried if the source of the dividend is pre acquisition profit then it is pre acquisition dividend so therefore i don't have to ask what is post acquisition dividend you people will just like that tell come on 
What is the answer that for uh, post acquisition dividend you would tell Chandani? That's all. Simple. Okay. These two examples that you have pre acquisition and post acquisition. Why at all I should have classification? Whenever there is a classification that you have, treatment will be different. If treatment is to be saying, I don't have to differentiate. So, wherever you have differential treatment or wherever you have classification, you should be prepared for differential treatment. What is the treatment I should offer for pre acquisition dividend? And what is that I should have for pre acquisition dividend treatment? What should I do? Knowing pre acquisition dividend is one thing, but what for I should know, that also you should know. Come on. Pre acquisition dividend, what should I do in consolidated financial statement? No adjustment need to be made. <laughs> From the investments we should reduce. From investments we should reduce. What is that we have to do for reduction? Simply, when I bought the shares, controlling interest I bought. That point of time, the vendor of the shares could be expecting some dividend from that subsidy company because of the timing when he is effecting a sale, the price that he had negotiated with the parent company for purchase or that negotiation of 50 plus percentage, let us assume for all our cases, 75 percentage. 75 percentage shares that you have bought. The vendor of the 75 percentage of the share capital of the vendor company could have just felt that he is losing the dividend because the timing of such negotiation is that the buyer will be getting the dividend after the acquisition the seller will be deprived of that dividend. So, what is that he would have done? He would have jacked up the price. Therefore, the price negotiated between the two entities will be that of come dividend, which is inclusive of dividend. And these shares were bought after the dividend, the price would have been lower. So, therefore, the price that you paid for this majority shares, not for shares alone, but also for the impending dividend. Therefore, we are expected to deduct this pre-acquisition dividend from the cost of investment. Simple as it. Are you clear? So, what is the treatment that you should offer credit to investments account? Invariably, they commit the mistake and when they commit the mistake, what is that you should do? You have to rectify. Isn't it? Next. Post-acquisition dividend. What should you do with post-acquisition dividend? Post-acquisition dividend he is to be credited to P and L account because there is no question of pre there is come dividend concept. Are you understanding all of you? Now I told you a very important thing. So one thing not possible is what I told you. No. So later on I am just uh, telling uh, that I may change my stand. Now I will change my stand. How? See in a problem that we see in the examination scenario, they will not give simple scenario, they will give at a higher level. So, your learning process should be that we are going to reach. How this is going to be yes from what I noted as no. I will tell you a classic case where first three months of an accounting year, they have booked only loss. Remaining nine months, they have booked good profit, extraordinary profit they have made. That means, not normal profit, good amount of good stream of profit they got. Now, dividend is to be declared for the year. You don't say the dividend is only for last 9 months. Dividend as per Companies Act, whether it is 1956 or 2013, it is dividend for the year. What is the source of such dividend, if you ask? It is only from my profit. Such profit I have earned only in the last 9 months, let us assume last 9 months post acquisition period. First 3 months pre acquisition period. For the entire dividend, for the full year, I have paid the dividend only out of post acquisition profit. But the dividend is attributable for 
both pre acquisition as well as post acquisition first three months falling under pre acquisition last nine months falling under post acquisition are you understanding all of you so though we might think at the very initial stage that pre and post are exclusively related to one full accounting year and all that but here we are not here i conveyed year 1 year 2 and all that here i have not conveyed it as year 1 and year 2 it is simply divided as pre and post are you understanding all of you so therefore all possibilities are there are you understanding all of you so therefore what is the conclusion that we are making for pre acquisition it is a dividend declared out of pre acquisition profit post acquisition dividend declared out of post acquisition profit for the first one credit to investments account second one credit to profit and loss account are you clear now no question on uh, any doubt on dividend i hope that uh, things are very clear about the dividend now the second thing after dividend could be your stock reserve or unrealized profit that stock reserve or unrealized profit what is this stock reserve or unrealized profit what is stock reserve what is this many problems will have this adjustment now i will tell you the philosophy of consolidation i told you that parent company acquiring majority interest in subsidiary company both are in coexistence in order to know the performance we need to assume that these two entities are only one in reality but though you may be having in different forms two different companies in the form you will have two but in substance you have only one company so it is one company concept is what you have it in consolidation all assets of parent company will be added with or all assets of subsidiary company will be added with the assets of parent same in the case for liabilities but not in the case of capital so capital of subsidiary company will not be added with the capital of parent then what is it we will be doing the capital of subsidiary company will be divided into two not divided by two divided into two one the group held by parent the other one held by outsiders the outsiders will be referred from now on as minority interest in india as an ifrs they call them as non controlling interest nci here it is mi like mumbai indians here it is what minority interest in ifrs or in india as they call that particular portion as non controlling interest okay coming back to the subject so when the assets are to be added just like that when asset of the parent or asset of the subsidiary company when you suspect that the transaction between the two had resulted in the form of a price fixed more than the cost to one entity that may be cost to another entity so it is nothing new at ipcc level we have done this exercise in departmental accounting department 1 transferring it to department 2 at a price greater than the cost correct and at a later point of time for the entity as a whole we will remove this unrealized profit that amount of stock purchased by one department not consumed by that department we will be identifying the extra portion tied up portion and we will reduce it which we have done even in cpt also we have done that consign or consign and all that we have just done so removing yeah, uh, there is unloading the reserve is not uh, something new why we are doing is that parent company sold goods to come subsidiary company subsidiary company not used fully for their production there are some stock lying unsold and such stock is not reflecting cost to the group as a whole why cost to the group as a whole that we are seeking is that we have a philosophy of single entity in consolidation i cannot make profit to myself therefore the overstated value of the stock we have got to deflate it and that portion is what we call it out as stock reserve there are two types of stock reserves that you have one is downstream the other one is upstream what is downstream and what is upstream downstream is where sale is made by parent to subsidiary company even you can easily remember in alphabet p comes first s comes later so p is a taller company subsidiary company is a shorter company 
So, therefore, any transaction where the goods are flowing from parent to subsidiary, you call that as downstream. And where the profit is made by subsidiary company, subsidiary company affecting sale to parent company will be taken up as upstream. There is one more stream also that we have. One is uh, downstream. The other one is upstream. In both the cases, stock reserve computation will be same. There is one more that you have deemed upstream. What is deemed upstream? Where one subsidiary affecting sale to another subsidiary. So, here it is parent to subsidiary. Then subsidiary to parent. There one is subsidiary 1 to subsidiary 2 or it could be subsidiary 2 to subsidiary 1. Deemed upstream. What is the treatment that we should offer in the case of stock reserve? We have got to eliminate in all the cases. So please understand the stock reserve treatment is like this way. In the balance sheet, we have got to reduce from stock. From stock, we have got to reduce. Then, in the case of downstream, what we are expected to do is that from the profit and loss account of parent, we have got to reduce. So, reduce from the asset side, stock, and reduce from profit and loss account of the parent, uh, same amount. Because who is making profit in this case? Parent is making profit, therefore, reduce only from the profit and loss account of the parent. So, please understand what is downstream. Downstream is a case where sale is affected by parent to subsidiary. Who is making profit? Parent is making profit. So, punish only the parent. Punish only the parent. Parent's profit and loss one should be reduced to the extent of unrealized portion, not all the stock reserve. So, whatever profit they have made, please just don't reduce. Please reduce only the profit related to unsold stock. Unrealized profit. Are you clear? So, this is for downstream. So, what is it we should do for upstream? So, in the consolidated balance sheet, so the treatment is going to be same on the asset side. From stock reduce, in the case of upstream, in consolidated profit and loss account, you reduce and from minority interest also you reduce. So, you have to reduce in two different places in the case of upstream. Why in two different places I got to reduce? Not same amount I got to reduce. So, whatever sum that I have reduced, say 100 rupees I am reducing, would mean here I got to reduce 75, here I got to reduce 75. So much of amount that I have reduced on the asset side, only that much of amount I should reduce from liability side. But not from one account, but from two different accounts. So, how much I should reduce from profit and loss account is parents share on such stock reserve. And for minority share, I got to reduce from minority interest at 25. In all our cases, by default, when I write it 75, it is parent holding 75%. That is what you have got to understand. So, on either side, I got to reduce. This is the same for being the upstream also. In deemed upstream also the same treatment. So therefore, there are only two. Upstream, downstream or downstream and upstream. Just for the sake of developing that interest only I told you it is deemed upstream. So, it has got the same treatment as that of upstream only. Are you understanding all of you? So, this is stock reserve. Now, the scenario could be a little complicated. Complicated one you want or simple only you want? Complicated only because we want to be robust and we can take up any amount of uh, adjustment. What is that great in it? I told you as stock reserve. But for one it could be plant and machinery, for another it could be stock. Parent uh, had sold its stock. Or it could be like this way. Parent that transferred their plant and machinery to subsidiary company. Let us not complete it. Both. Let us take up both as plant and machinery only. 
A transferred to B at a price greater than cost. This is not stock reserve. This is non-current asset only. What would you do? Pay and sold 100 lakhs uh, plant to subsidiary company during the current period. During the current period, 100 lakhs at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, where relationship was uh, established on the first day. First day itself, there was a transfer 100 to 120. Parent made a profit of 20. They charge depreciation at the rate of 10%. Parent all you have to tell. Because whose profit, whose uh, balance sheet and uh, what items you have to do. What should I do? Reduce or add? Right. To be a little more careful in telling. Who made a profit in this operation? In the example, parent had made a profit of 20 lakhs. So therefore it is downstream. So, therefore, it is affecting asset side as well as consolidated P and L account 20 lakhs, 20 lakhs. You are just reduced from plan and measure, reduced from profit and loss account. Depreciation. Whose depreciation now you have to adjust? Is it parents' depreciation or subsidies' depreciation? Profit should be adjusted in parents' books and the corresponding depreciation which is affecting the profit and loss account of the subsidy company and because of that, Minority interest is also affected, so you have to be very careful.